In this video, we're going to talk about um, Bronsted Lowry acids and bases. So I'd like to highlight that this is a review. Most of this video is a review from Chapter 4. So if you don't remember um, what's going on with Bronsted and Lowry acids and bases, you should go back and take a look at the video on acids and bases from Chapter 4. That'll provide you with a good review. And then if you, when you watch this video, it'll make a lot more sense because I am going to skip over a few things that are maybe a little bit more basic that we should already know. So when we talk about Bronsted-Lowry acids and bases, uh, the way that these are viewed is that um, an acid-base reaction is viewed as a proton transfer reaction. And so uh, what's happening here is we have an acid, and that's the species that gives up the proton, so it, gives, it donates a proton, and then we have a base which accepts the proton. So in this transfer of the proton from the acid to the base, that is what forms the reaction. Now there is a new concept that we're going to introduce in this video, and this is that we have something called uh, an, a conjugate acid-base pair. So in the reactants, you're going to have an acid and a base, and then in the products, you're going to have an acid and a base. And it turns out that whatever is an acid in the reactants becomes a base in the products. And we'll take a little bit more of a detailed look at this in just a second. So let's take a quick look at some examples. So one example of a Bronsted-Lowry acid-base reaction is the reaction of acetic acid with water. So if you remember, acetic acid has that chemical formula. And we, if we think back to our understanding of acids and bases, we know from our memorization of the acids that are strong acids that acetic acid is not a strong acid. And so we're going to start to set up this idea now that um, when we don't have a strong acid, we're going to wind up being in equilibrium. So I'm going to actually write in the equilibrium bars here. And what we're going to do is in the next video, we're actually going to take a look at uh, relative acid and base strengths. And we're going to start to introduce this idea of when we have an equilibrium versus when we don't. So uh, you'll see me start to make a distinction between um, when we have an equilibrium and when we don't. So when acetic acid reacts with water, for instance, we can make some products. And we know from our understanding of acids and bases that uh, acetic acid is going to be act as the acid, and so it's going to donate a proton. And so what we're going to get is we're going to get acetate, and we're going to get um, H3O+. Plus. And if you, if you look at this, so now that we know how to draw Lewis structures, we can sort of interpret this in terms of a structural picture where we have acetic acid which looks like this and we have water which looks like this and the acidic proton is this H that's connected to the carboxylic acid group hence it being an acid so what happens in this reaction is this H which is an H plus is transferred from the carboxylic acid group to the lone pair on the water and in that proton transfer we form acetate, which we know is a resonance structure, and we form the hydronium ion on the other side. And so if we look at this, we know that acetic acid is the acid. That's because it's the one that's donating the proton. Uh, and then the water is the base in this case. And so if we look on the other side, we can view this reaction, this return reaction. So we have the forward, we have the reaction in the forward direction viewed as an acid base. Now let's look at the re the reaction going in the reverse direction um, as an acid base reaction. So in this case, the proton transfer is going to be from the hydronium back to the acetate. So in this case, it turns out that uh, if this is, we can call this acid one and uh, base two. And over here, what we can do is we can start to assign an acid and a base. So in this case, this is going to be our acid, and this is going to be our base. And so this base is associated with the uh, acetic acid, so this is going to be our first conjugate acid-base pair. And our hydronium ion is going to be our acid in this case. And so now you can see that we have what we call two acid and base pairs. So our pairs in this case is going to be the acetic acid and the acetate, with the acetic acid being the acid and the acetate being the conjugate base, or the base that is that forms when you deprotonate uh, the acid. And the same thing goes for the hydronium in the water. 
The acid form of water is the hydronium ion, and when that deprotonates, it forms the base form of water, which is water, and so we form an acid-base conjugate pair. Now let's look at the case where we have an, uh, a base. So let's look at the case of ammonia. So with ammonia, what we have is we have NH3 aqueous plus water is in equilibrium with, and if we remember our chemistry from last semester, we have the ammonium ion and hydroxide. And again, we know that uh, ammonia is a weak base, so we're going to set this up as a we're going to set this up as a um, an equilibrium. So that's why I'm putting the equilibrium sign there. So if we want to look at this from a structural perspective, we have ammonia, which looks like this, and we have water, which looks like this. And then on the other side, what's ha so what's happening here is water is transferring its proton to ammonia, and we're winding up with um, ammonium, which is this structure, and hydroxide, which is that structure, which is just basically OH. And so in this case, water is acting as an acid, and ammonia is acting as a base. And so if we look on this side, we have the conjugate acid of ammonia, which is ammonium, and we have the conjugate base of uh, water, which is uh, the hydroxide. And so what's interesting about this is we can see that water has sort of this propensity to um, act as either a base or an acid. So in the, in the, case, of, in the case where you have an acid in, with water, uh, the water is going to act as a base. In the case where you put a base with water, the water is going to act as an acid. And actually, in the next video, that's something we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about how we figure out if water will act as an acid or a base, depending on the acid strength. Um, and another thing that we're going to talk about in a future video is this idea that water can act as both an acid and a base. And we're going to see that when we talk about the autoionization of water. Okay, so let's take a look at some examples where we're going to write out our... Um, we're going to write out some acid-base equilibria here. And so in this case, uh, it says identify the conjugate acid-base pairs. If left blank, predict the products. So let's look at the first one. We have HClO3 and we have water. So we know that HClO3 is a weak acid. Uh, so therefore, we're, when we write the acid-base pair, uh, we're going to have the proton being transferred from the HClO3 to the water. So in this case, what we're going to get is we're going to get ClO3 minus aqueous, and we're going to get H3O plus aqueous. And so if we, need, if we want to identify the conjugate acid-base pairs, we can draw kind of like a, a little bit of a, a line here and connect them. So in this case, this is going to be our acid, and this is going to be its conjugate base. And so that is our first conjugate acid-base pair. If you look on the left, the proton is being transferred to the water, going in the forward direction, and in the reverse direction, the proton is being transferred from the hydronium to the chlorate anion, so that, is, that means that this is going to act as a base on the right-hand side. And the same thing goes for water. So on the left-hand side, water is acting as a base, and on the right-hand side, it's acting as an acid. So that is how you can identify the conjugate acid-base pairs. Let's look at the one with uh, the chlorate and ammonia. So in this case, we have chlorate, which is an acid, and ammonia, which is a base. So in this case, what we're going to do is, we're, again, we're going to have a transfer of a proton from uh, the chlorate to the ammonia, and we're going to get ClO3 minus aqueous, and we're going to get ammonium aqueous. Now, again, if you're struggling to figure out how I'm coming up with these, you should go back and review Chapter 4. A lot of this basic predicting where the proton transfer is going to happen, how it happens, and how to figure out these products all was done in chapter four. I'm using that knowledge and now extending it to understand which one is the acid and which one is the conjugate base. So let's look at the conjugate acid base pairs for this one. So again, we have the uh, the chlor the chloric the the uh, HClO3 acting as an acid and the chlorate acting as a base, and the ammonia in this case is going to act as a base while the ammonium is going to act as its conjugate acid. And so those are the acid-base pairs in that. 
Now this next one's an interesting one because it involves a uh, proton transfer, but it's a little bit more complicated. So in this one, you wouldn't, we wouldn't expect you to necessarily know how to write the products, but we would expect you to have an idea of what's going on um, in terms of a proton transfer. So if we look, we have FeH2O6, 3 plus, plus H2O. Now, I can see already that this, con looking at a base pair that we're kind of used to seeing, the H2O is going from H2O to H3O plus. So it's gaining a proton. So this must be acting as a base, and this must be acting as an acid, since the water gained a proton to go to H3O+. And so if that is true, then this must have acted as the acid, and this must be acting as a base on the other side, these coordination complexes. Okay, there's one other thing that we should review, and again, this is a, a little bit of review from Chapter 4. Uh, this is the concept of polyprotic acids. So if you remember, um, we can have acids that have more than one proton. That's what a polyprotic acid is. So when you, when you want to identify something as polyprotic, it's an acid with more than one acidic proton. And so um, in this case, the question is asking us to identify the conjugate acid pairs in the case of the complete deprotonation of H2S. So what we'll notice is that H2S has two protons. And we learned last semester that these protons come off in a stepwise fashion. So we have our first deprotonation, where we have a proton being transferred uh, to water, making H3O plus and HS minus. And then this HS minus can react with a second water molecule to make S2 minus and H3O plus. So in this case, we have the H2S acting as an acid. And then we have HS minus acting as a base in this first reaction. And water is acting as a base on the left and an acid on the right. Now, uh, the HS minus in this case, when we interact that with water a second time, this is going to act as an acid. And S2 minus is going to act as the conjugate base. And water is going to do the same thing. It's going to act as a base. And then on this side, it's going to act as an acid. Now, what's interesting about this is that the HS minus can either um, accept a proton, uh, as it does in this case. So in this back reaction, HS minus goes um, back to H2S. Or it can donate a proton to water, um, making S2 minus. And this is something that uh, this is something that we can identify and, and sort of call out. And you'll be learning about this when you do experiment 12. This concept of an, a species that can act as either an acid or base is what we call amphoteric. And basically what happens is, depending on what the conditions are, if you put HS minus in the presence of a stronger acid, uh, the HS minus will act as a base. On the other hand, if you put HS minus in the presence of a weaker acid or something that's going to act, act basic, it will act as an acid. And so that is something that we call amphoteric, meaning it can either act as an, uh, an acid or a base depending on the conditions. So in this case, uh, this covers everything that we are going to talk about about Bronsted, Lowry, acids, and bases. And the key thing here is to be able to identify the uh, conjugate acid-base pairs and to be able to identify an acid and a base from the proton transfer. You should also get familiar with this idea of polyprotic acids, where when an acid has more than one acidic proton, it will come off in more than one step, um, making a single deprotonation step and then a double deprotonation step. And in some cases, acids can even have three protons, like phosphoric acid, in which case it'll come off in three steps, uh, as depicted here, it's just it'll have a third one. And then finally, this concept of being amphoteric, this is where a, um, a species can act as either an acid or a base, and it depends on what conditions it's in, whether it's in the presence of an acid or a base. So in the next video, we're going to talk about uh, relative acid strengths, and we're going to look at um, a few things in terms of how can we look at a chart that has acid strength, and what will, what will it tell us in terms of making predictions about these reactions.